Tales from the Tabletop, the video series where I bring you anecdotes of adventure from Warhammer to D&D and everything in between. And I take my favorite one and illustrate it for your own listening and viewing pleasure. Today's a special one because I have a gift for you at the end. Uh, hope you like it, but let's begin with some stories. We've got some rapid fire stories from uh, uh, Tell Me a Time of Your Magical Mishaps. So let's begin. Hailstone CD writes, we accidentally killed a hobo using a create food and water spell. This happened because our DM likes to make us roll d20s for any action success, and if it rolls on one, we roll it again on a critical failure table. With two nat ones in a row, our cleric accidentally summoned 45 pounds of food and 60 gallons of water directly into the hobo's stomach, making him explode. Our next story comes from Lumen Does Stuff. I accidentally turned a hobo into a ghoul and then had to deal with that. For context, my DM gave us something called mystery potions, and they had a random effect. I gave one to this old hobo. I had some regrets, because now I was against something with over 100 hit points, and I had a sad total of 30 on me at the time. Rinderpest 1992 writes, We were exploring a cave. We were following a powerful caster. I forget exactly what class, and we found a blocked door with a scared caster behind it. She didn't know us, so I decided to show her that we were peaceful in the most considerate way possible. With all the strength of a headstrong paladin, I kicked the door in yelling, WE COME IN PEACE! I took massive damage from that caster and was almost unconscious from that one shot. Our next story comes from Myvatan. Certain I'm pronouncing that wrong. Miv... Mivatan? Myvatan. Mivatan. Our next story comes from M, and M writes, My character, a wood elf druid and werewolf at the time, picked up a cursed box that had been enchanted to cast polymorph on those who tried to open it. However, lycanthropy made her immune to the box, making her think it wasn't cursed at all. We were in a rush, so I deposited the box inside the party's bag of holding. Fast forward seven sessions. The werewolf has died, and I'm rejoining the party with a new character. The second day of knowing the party, she watches as the ranger reaches into the bag for what he believed was a perfectly ordinary box, and then polymorphed himself nine times trying to get the perfectly ordinary box out. Our next story comes from Iriar DM. Pretty sure I'm mispronouncing. And the story is called The Grill of Petrification. The big bads in the campaign I run are a group of very powerful spellcasters that have modified their bodies in some way. One of them can transform into a dragon, one of them has magical cyborg parts, and so on. One of the scariest villains my party has fought is an undead deity of frost named Asthoul. He was reanimated by a necromancer big bad of the same group, and has become one of the biggest threats to the party. With the big bad is a goblin whose mouth is enchanted as a bag of holding. He's essentially the big bad's travel bag. He has a magical set of grills, which he uses to suppress the magic of his mouth, so he doesn't have a giant void in his mouth in public. This magical grill is a homebrew item that I created called the Grill of Petrification. When worn, it suppresses any magical abilities caused by a creature's mouth, such as a breath weapon. It has a negative side effect, however, that if you wear it without any sort of magical mouth effect, it is you who becomes petrified. It is a strange homebrew item. It only had three uses. It was very hard to use, and an NPC villain had it, so I didn't think there'd be any harm. Well, a battle ensued between this goblin and the party, 
and sure enough, they killed him before he could escape. They took off his grill, reanimated his corpse, interrogated him, chomped his head off, scalped him, and then used his scalped head as a bag of holding. That... It's pretty metal. That's that. Here is the award for most metal thing I've read all day. That wasn't even the worst of it. Oh dear gravy! <sighs> Months later, both in game and out of game, they arrive at an auction where they meet Astoul and another one of the big bads. They are both after the same item there, and a large fight ensues. My monk player very cleverly lured Astoul into an alleyway and hit him with a few stunning strikes, dwindling down his legendary resistances, and then, while stunned, grappled Astoul and placed the grill in his skeleton mouth. He saved his first constitution save, but after another round of combat, Astoul biffed his second. So now, they had a two-ton statue of one of my strongest villains. They figured out a way to carry it with them in a wagon, but accidentally sent themselves to hell. As one does. They spent ten-plus sessions with a petrified deity that they brought literally to hell and back. Not to mention... One of my players had the ability to psychically speak to creatures, so he just had to sit there and listen to everything the psychic statue said. They intended to use him as a bargaining chip against the other big bads. Eventually, he was unpetrified and rejoined the other big bads. Fast forward a few months, and the party has a showdown once more with Astou. He has an army of undead at his side. The scene is set in a raging and unbearable blizzard. As the Ool has his army reduced my five level 12 players to the low 20s in their hit points. As the Ool creates a wall of ice and splits the party as soon as the cleric reduces his legendary resistances to zero, which took a lot of spell slots. As Thoul knocks the monk unconscious and throws her body into another one of my players' cloud of daggers, almost instantly killing them. The players are not doing very well, and are even considering running. The warlock calmly walks up to As Thoul and attempts to place the grill in his face. The attack is at a disadvantage, and she doesn't have a proficiency. She hits... And now, as the Ool must make a constitution saving throw. He is a deity of frost. He has a plus 10 to con saves. I only need a total of 14. I confidently pick up my dice, roll it in the center of the battle match for everyone to see. And I roll a 3. For a total of 13. As the Ool fails once more. A decision I made a year ago in real life rippled and turned this horrifying deity into stone. Not once, but twice. The party then proceeded to cut him into three pieces while he was petrified and stuff his head into the bag of holding made from his former goblin servant's scalped head. Daggone. This next story is the one that I've been illustrating the whole time. I hope it was worth the wait. It's a short one, but it's a good one. And I have a gift for you. This one comes from Lightseeker501. My group plays on Roll20, and I don't have a camera. My sister found this cute artwork of a pigeon in a wizard hat rolling dice. So I've been using that as my profile picture since I began DMing. During a rescue mission into a castle under attack, my group discovered a repository of dangerous magical items. The bard, my brother, was bravely volunteered by the group to investigate the contents of this vault. He proceeded to not have a good time. 
ultimately leading to his mind fracturing under the realization that he was, in fact, a fictional D&D character. Eventually, the players discovered a friendly emerald dragon wormling. In the resulting conversation, the bard went on a tirade about how awful of a day he was having and blamed it on the pigeon wizard in the sky and tented as a fourth wall break for my profile picture. In a flash, the dragon responded by saying, You know about him too? It took the bard by surprise, and he couldn't stop laughing for several minutes. Absolutely awesome thing to have happen at our virtual table. That's the end of this one today. I read this, I thought it was cute. Wizard pigeon rolling dice jest, of course. I did an image search, and there's a couple of these that you can find on different parts of the internet, but I just, I was, I was compelled deep in my own heart. Uh, to make my own rendition of Wizard Pigeon, so here it is. And this, my friends, is my gift to you, because Wizard Pigeon rolling dice is clearly somebody else's express idea, an idea that several other people have had. I clearly don't own this, and so you know what? It occurred to me, I don't own this, everybody owns this. So if you want to use this image as your uh, profile picture, and anything at all that you do or say maybe you're writing your own your own stories your own role-playing games you're right you're doing your own thing and you could just use little spot illustration this one's yours take it it's all yours i will have download links in the doobly-doo below uh and i will also probably have more links in uh the store on my website fear not it will be free just click and get you a download if you want to drop me some extra cash i'd be grateful but not at all necessary this is my gift to you please enjoy your wizard pigeon rolling dice however if you would like the original art from this episode it'll be available on my store at coffeeandhate.biz click store at the top and if you would like some more of my art sent to you every month for the paltry sum of $5, then please consider joining my Patreon, Gabe's Sticker Club for Attractive People. $5 a month gets you a 3x3 die-cut sticker sent to you every month. So until next time, thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for listening, and may your dice roll high and never be cursed. named as tool as thool there we go uh undead deity of frost named as thool as son of a there's almost nothing in there <sighs> my cup from leeds castle is starting to fall apart i guess they just don't make resin cups the way they did in the middle ages